country in offensive rebounding, 16 a game. Is offensive rebounding something that you can coach, or is that is that just an instinct thing for the kids you get? Yeah, I guess, you know, we, we get a lot of practice. We, you know, we miss a lot. So uh, these guys, you get a lot of practice uh, <laughs> ch chasing their re – no, yeah, I mean, like, listen, um, you know, defense and rebounding are things you could control. Um, you know, I think they're, they're – uh, there are things that if you uh, if you're consistent with those things night in and night out, then uh, you know you'll uh, you'll be in every game. So uh, uh, what we've got, I think, uh, you know, any time that you have a guy you know rebounds a ball like Isaiah, um, you know, and then you have a perimeter rebounder like Tyrese, uh, you know, and and James is a really good offensive rebounder too. So uh, you know, defensive rebounding wins, especially on the road. Kevin? Dan, it's been a while, obviously, since you guys have gone on the road. What's it kind of like leaving the stores bubble and kind of getting on the road again? Yeah, it, 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 it was, uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. It was, uh, it, it was just nice to, to, uh, you know, pull into a, pull into a city and, and, uh, you know, get out on the road together as a group you know, get on a plane and, and, uh, you know, I think it's going to be really good for, uh, you know, for just the chemistry and, uh, and I think the mental, you know, the mental state of the group too. It's like, uh, you know, we played a game the other day We're you know, we're, we're getting another game today. We look like we got a, you know, a series of games coming up and hopefully practices and we just get some consistency in the season. Thanks. Thanks. Dan, is, is there anything um, you guys will do differently on this road trip as in terms of from what you've done in the past? It's, I know you don't, the guys aren't like going out to dinner and stuff like that very often anyway. I mean, is it just a matter of kind of hotel, shoot around tomorrow, game? Is that is that pretty much it? Yeah, I mean, we, we like to get in. Um, I think I think a lot of it is the same, just the, the you know, the distance. Uh, just trying to stay, you know, distance during meals and during different, uh, you know, during different parts of the actual uh, transportation part here. Um, you know, taking the precaution of having, you know, two buses, uh, you know, just in case. And, and uh, <clears throat> you know, we, we, uh, we traditionally like to get into town a little bit earlier and get shots up in the arena the night before the game and then get the shoot around and so give our guys two chances to, get comfortable in the space so just to um you know to eliminate some risk we uh, we've eliminated the shooting the night before mike maverdakis hey coach uh do you have a, a status update on a coca cook at all yeah he uh you know he's getting you know, i think he's you know he's just he's getting closer um you know, he's, he's looking good. Um, it's hard to give a timeline, but, you know, he's, uh, you know, just because I don't want to put myself out there, but, he, you know, he's, he's getting, you know, he's definitely getting closer. He looks good. Neil, Astro. Yeah, to kind of follow up, I mean, it's a good problem to have, but how, how and kind of where does a cook kind of fit in Obviously, I mean, such a force defensively and, you know, I'm sure, you know, improved offense uh, in the offseason. Where have you given a lot of thought to kind of where he fits in and, you know, uh, the, the rotation problems, I guess, good problems that it's going to cause? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we want him back as soon as uh, as soon as he's ready, you know, physically, mentally, uh, you know, where he's ready to to, uh, you know, come in and help us in the. Uh, you know, in, in, in very intense conference games, uh, you know, this isn't, um, you know, this isn't like, there's no get well games in this league where you could bring a guy in and, you know, let him get his feet wet versus a, a bottom feeder in the league or a low major buy game to try to get right. So, um, you know, I, I would just say, you know, he's, uh, you know, Cook is close. Um, you know, he's looking good in practice and, and when when you know when when, uh, when he's at the point where um, 
where he looks game ready, like Big East game ready, he'll uh, he'll be in. Tom? Yeah, Dan, uh, Marquette's played, I guess, 11 games. So they've been able to get a lot of games in, you know, a few games in in the conference. Uh, they're, they're kind of transitioning to life after after Marcus Howard. What, what are you seeing from them in terms of their strengths and weaknesses? Yeah, really good balance. Um, you know, just a really, really good, you know, balanced team, you know, get, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, DJ gives them like a really, really high level talent on the ball. Uh, you know, Kane and, uh, and McEwen get, uh, you know, some really, really strong, uh, you know, wing play. Um, and then uh, obviously they throw it in a lot, you know, they've got, uh, you know, they rotate the three, fours and fives in um, and they throw the ball inside. Uh, they're just, they, they've got really, really good balance. They're, you know, really, really well coached, sound on defense. Um, that probably, you know, where, where we may have an advantage may be, you know, in, 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 in the depth uh, if the game comes down to that. But, you know, they just look like a, you know, a really well-rounded, well-coached uh, team. Sean? Coach, Happy New Year. Uh, can you just Happy talk to being, uh, you know, just fired up uh, to, to get a few games now that uh, it looks like, you know, we're, we're going to be playing. Uh, just, you know, the, the feel of, of, of being able to get back out there knowing, hey, you know, we do the right things. Everybody does the right things. We're going to be continuing uh, to, to play. Um, you're, you're a guy that gets everybody fired up. Put a perspective on that for me. Yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome to be able to, uh, you know, to be in a position to, uh, you know, to play these games, uh, you know, obviously safely. And, uh, but, you know, for us, it's, um, this is the best, you know, we felt in a while, you know, really since Mohegan. You know, after the USC game, preparing for that NC State game, and and like really feeling like you're you have a season going. Um, this is the closest we felt since then. Uh, just having obviously gotten at the Paul game in a couple of days of practice, on to the next Big East first Big East road game. Um, you know, we, we, there's there's a lot of joy and excitement in the group. Uh, you know, getting a chance to to do this right now. After Dave. Yeah, Dan, I don't, I don't know how much you pay attention to the uh, NCAA's net rankings, uh, especially this early in the season, uh, especially since you've only played five games. But I guess, and I know you've kind of answered this, a similar question to this before, but given how that formula like really stresses uh, road games and the ability, the ability to play well on the road or away from home and, and the fact that there doesn't seem to be a whole, you know, big home court advantage this season because of lack of fans, I mean, is that, does that render the rankings a little more, uh, a little less, I don't know, a little less to it this year, I guess? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'd say, you know, I, I think coaches, you know, this time of year were so, uh, we're just trying to you know, um, make sure that we're on the right path with our team, establishing roles, uh, the way that we want to play it. Um, the best course of action moving forward as a team in terms of giving ourselves the best chance to have a really good season. So I think like we probably, you know, when we're deeper in the season, like we do have some of those discussions about some of the metrics and Ken Palm and Nets and all this stuff. But, you know, what we're, I'm, I'm probably not as familiar with Dave just because it's so early in the season. Um, and, and for us, it's just, you know, obviously our mission is to play in March, uh, and the way that we look at, you know, game for us like tomorrow is, you know, I think, uh, you know, what I've told the team is uh, if you want to play at the, at the top of the league, if you want to play at the tippy top of this league and, um, you know, then then obviously you, you've got to, um, you know, you, you've got to win games like tomorrow. Um, you know, Seton Hall and, 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 and uh you know, he's playing at the top of the league and, you know, they're obviously winning on the road. So you want to play at the tippy top of this conference, we've got to win on the road. And uh, um, whether that helps our net or not, we just want to win on the road. Devin? Isaiah's been uh, in some foul trouble the last few games. 
what do you kind of need from him? Uh, to, you know, what does he need to do better? I think he's effective. I mean, I think, you know, I, I see several players that have been affected by the no crowd. Uh, you know, energy, energy players, players that feed off the crowd. You know, usually my teams feed off the crowd because of, you know, we, we play with a lot of passion and emotion. But, like, you know, I see it with my brother's team. I see it with Remy Martin. I see it with, you know, with, with, uh, with my old school, with, with Fats. And I see it with a guy like Isaiah who, uh, um, you know, who feeds so much off of the home crowd, the road crowd, and it raises their level because they're high energy guys. I think it's hurt. Um, I think it's hurt Isaiah a little bit. Uh, so we've, uh, you know, so I've tried to stir up the passion and emotion in him, uh, you know, by trying to get him back to his roots a little bit, just more, more active, more energy, more, more intensity, obviously less fouling, but you know, just all over the backboard, contesting everything defensively, uh, you know, finishing big at the rim. So, uh, yeah, Isaiah is a critical guy. We need him, you know, his, his last two games, uh, uh, you know, haven't been, uh, you know, what we need from him. So he, he's got to be better. We need double figure points and close to double figure rebounds from him and, and, and rim protection. And obviously the ball screen defense, which is elite at. Jeff Jacobs. Hey Dan, uh, happy, happy New Year! Uh, I happy just New Year, man. Follow up on the uh, Isaiah Whaley. I'm sure after the last two games, you've analyzed the type of fouls he's taken, and I was just wondering if you kind of expand on, you know, what you thought that he didn't do wrong. They might have got a, you know, a iffy call against it, and what he definitely <laughs> did wrong in fouling. Yeah. No, I think, you know, Isaiah's got such great timing and he's so good at protecting the rim that I think, um, you know, he's gotten a little, you know, I think he got a little bit lazy with his pre-catch, like post defense, uh, like his pre-catch defense when guarding his man. Uh, I think he allowed him, he's allowed him the post too easy and it's it put him in a, in a bad spot, particularly against Creighton. Um, you know, he committed the bad, you know, just a, you know, kind of a bad, um, a bad senior moment, uh, you know, foul uh, early in the second half versus Creighton when we had a lot of momentum, we were playing well, which put him back on the bench. I would just, you know, for him, it's, um, you know, you raise the bar uh, because you make yourself so valuable and so productive. Um, and that now we, you know, that now we, we've got to deliver, uh, you know, he's got to deliver in, uh, you know, in a, in a big year in his, in his career. Roger, Cleveland. Dan, it, there's been a lot of inconsistency on the team so far individually outside of book night. Do you see anybody coming on a little bit now that you've had some consistent practices and, and a few games? Yeah, I mean, we, we've um, obviously, uh, you know, seeing Tyrese, you know, it's a big game for Tyrese. Um, you know, you don't want to be a one hit wonder. You know, you, you want to show consistency and, and uh, you know, become a reliable double figure scorer and a, and, and a lockdown defender and a guy that just, you know, eats glass. Uh, so it's a big game for Tyrese to prove that it, at this level, he could do it back to back nights in the Big East. Um, you know, RJ, I think, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, uh, you know, we just, we got to get RJ, he's got to have that, you know, that, that seven for 12, 18 points, six assists game or that 20, you know, I think, uh, I think he's, he's more aggressive. He's being more, more, he's, he's attacking. He's being more assertive in practice. Um, you know, he's trying more. He just, you know, we need him to, uh, you know, to, uh, to, 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 to catch a, catch a game offensively where he's, where he's really, really good at that end as a leader and defensively with his toughness. He's been tremendous that way. But, you know, we, you know, we, we, we need, uh, we need those guys next to James on the perimeter. And I like the way Tyler's shooting the ball coming in. He's had his best couple of days of practice, um, you know, and, and we're desperate to get Adama going. Any other questions, guys? Anybody else? Maxie, you all set? Bill, I've got one. Hey, Charlotte, go ahead. Just a, hi, Dan, happy new year. <laughs> Sorry about happy that. Happy new year, Charlotte. Get to, hear um, to follow up on Adama, what have you done, I guess, maybe over the last couple of practices just to try and 
get him a little bit more comfortable or help him? Is he starting to kind of realize, I know you said he struggled a little bit with that adjustment to Big East play, um, yeah. but just get him a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, but, you know, the, obviously all the time he's missed as a freshman hurt. Plus he's a kid that reclassified up too. So, um, you know, he had another year high school, which he, so he classed up and then uh, was given <laughs> not a lot of, uh, opportunity to prepare for the season so um you know it, more conversations with him about you know just um he's a perfectionist in everything he does uh, as a student as an athlete um you know he's just the ultimate perfectionist so you know just try to be easier on yourself um just be physical and and uh um you know and and be a you know, be a monster in the paint and, uh, and play your game, but try to smile more, try to find a way to relax. He wants to do so well, so bad that, um, you know, I think he's, uh, you know, he's becoming a little frozen that way. Uh, so we just gotta, gotta just find ways to get him enough minutes uh, while still, you know, obviously not compromising our ability to win because, uh, you know, he still has things he's gotta learn at both ends.